friends, it's Shari, and today I'm making a slimline card based on a storybook. I was inspired by my friend Jen, who made a card based on Winnie the Pooh. She was inspired by Grace on the design team. And I also thought this would be a good opportunity to ditch the markers and play with some colored pencils to get that nice, soft storybook look. So I'm going to be using a bunch of different sets to make my images. I'm using the Little Pig from Hey There, this Bear from Den Sweet Den, I'm also going to use this little owl from So Owlsome. And then I'll be using this little ink pot to make my honey pot that my bear is going to hold. So like I said before, I'm going to be doing colored pencil coloring. So I'm actually stamping these in black licorice ink. I don't have to worry about an ink being Copic friendly or watercolor friendly when I'm using my colored pencils. So I'm going to be using black licorice for all my images. And I've just gone ahead and put those in my Misty and I'm just going to stamp them down. You can see I have not stamped down the little ink pot just yet. I'm going to be doing that separately. So I'm going to ink it up and then I'm going to wipe away the ink on the part that says ink because I wanted to say honey. So I'm going to ink it up separately and I just thought it would be easier if I just went ahead into my other images and then focused on this one. And then I'm going to take the very corner of my chamois and carefully wipe away the ink that are on the letters. Now when I stamp it down, you're going to still see it kind of ghosted there. And then I'm going in with my sand eraser and I'm just erasing what was there off. And then now I can go in with a very thin Copic multiliner and write the word honey. So I've changed my ink pot into a honey pot. Now to move on to my coloring. For this particular card, I am using my trusty Prismacolor pencils. I've had these a very long time, but you could use any pencils that you have in your stash. I am starting with some darker colors. I'm tracing out his shirt here. You can see where I've got his sleeves and the bottom of the shirt and then the neckline. And my tip for pencils is to have a light hand because you can always build up the color on top of each other and for me I like to start with sort of my shadows and then move up lighter so start dark and move to the light so you can see I put that darker red where all the shadows are going to be and then this one is a slightly lighter red and I'm just blending that dark red out I actually pulled in an even darker one and you can just build up those layers and add more shadows I'm going back to my lightest color pencil and I'm just filling in his shirt. You can see you just go back and forth between the colors to get it looking the way you want. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill the rest of it in. I'm going in some small circular motions so you don't get those pencil strokes as much. There are times when you might want those pencil strokes, which you're going to see me do a little bit on the honey pot. But for a shirt, I'm just trying to make it nice and even. You can also blend your pencils out with Gamsol or some kind of blending solution. But for me, on this particular card, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to leave it looking just like this, where you can kind of see the texture of the pencil. So I'm moving on to the yellows of the bear, and I'm doing the same process here. I'm going to do this the same on all the images, which is start with that darker color. So I'm going in with that darker yellow into the places where I think the shadows will be, and then I'll pull in a lighter yellow to color the rest of the bear.
So I kind of skipped over the coloring of Piglet because I messed up and forgot to draw the arms of the pig. So Piglet's arms are actually a lighter pink and his body is that darker pink. So I'm coloring him again. I just stamped him again and I took my Copic Multiliner to draw in the edges there so you can see where the arms are. And then instead of drawing in the lines of his shirt, I'm doing sort of like I did on Winnie the Pooh and I drew in those lines with a darker pink. So instead of having those hard black lines, that becomes part of the coloring instead and I just think that it has a different kind of look. So now that I have all my images colored, I'm actually going to fussy cut these images out. So you could use the coordinating dies, but I actually wanted the look that these were part of my storybook scene that I'm creating and I didn't want that white border that the die creates. Also, I'm going to be stamping some bees for this card later on and this particular bee stamp does not have a die that matches. So I wanted all my images to match each other. So I'm just cutting right on the edges and for like the little tail on the pig I just cut it off and I will draw those pieces in later. I have a piece of blue watercolor wishes paper cut to three and a half by eight and a half for a slimline card and I also have some green watercolor wishes cut to that same three and a half inch width and this is going to be the grass on the bottom of my card as well as the treetops at the top. So I also want to create a tree trunk for my card. So I've cut the Lift the Flap tree backdrops from some paper bag cardstock and I'm just going to trim off the frame and the two trees on the right. So I'm just cutting these apart and then my grass at the bottom and my treetop canopy at the top, they're going to cover up these parts of the frame that you see, so these kind of raw edges. Now before I die cut my grass, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my sentiment using Harold's ABCs. So I thought that this card would be the perfect opportunity to do like I have done in the past and create a sentiment based on a quote. So this is a quote from Winnie the Pooh that says, Sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart. And you can see that I practice stamped it on a piece of typing paper and I'm using that as my guide and that's just a good way to make sure that your spacing's right and everything looks good. Know which line you want the words to be on. So that was my practice and I'm laying out the bottom line first. So I'm going to work from the bottom up because this is going to be on the bottom of my card. So that way I know my spacing is correct. So as you saw in my sample that I had made earlier, these four words fit perfectly across the bottom. This is actually the widest line of letters that I have in this sentiment. So I'm stamping that one first and then each one I'm going to do it a line at a time and that way you don't have to try and line up the letters with each other on the block. You can center them up as you go and also you don't have to worry too much about making something so long that you run out of letters. So actually in this whole sentiment I only had to stamp a single letter once and you're going to see it in this first line because there's only one lowercase m in this set 
And so I had to leave a spot for the M in the word sometimes because there's two M's. So you can see I've got a little hole there right after the O. I used the M to make sure my spacing was right and then I just moved it on the block. And then what I can do is just pop off that little M. I'm going to put it on a small block and I'm just going to stamp it in that space that's left. And since I used the stamp to figure out my spacing earlier, I know that it's going to fit perfectly. So now that that sentiment is stamped out, now I know how high I can put my grass die to cut my grassy hill. So I'm just using one of the simple grassy hillside borders and I've just kind of pushed it to one side so that it's not perfect. It's kind of higher on the left and lower on the right. And I'll just run that through my die cut machine. Now for the tree canopy at the top, I have another piece of that watercolor wishes paper. It's cut to three and a half inches wide as well. And I'm gonna use the puffy cloud border dies to cut my tree canopy. So you can see I'm just figuring out the placement to cover up those top edges of that tree. And I'll just hold it in place with a little piece of washi tape and run it through my die cut machine. I'm actually gonna cut two layers of this. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that this is cut to the right length. So I kinda of figured out where I needed it to be. I'm going to draw a pencil line along this edge of the blue piece of paper and that shows me where to trim this off. And then I'm going to do the same thing with another piece of this green watercolor wishes paper. I'm going to cut it again with the same border die. I've shifted it over and turned it so it's not exactly the same. And these two are going to layer on top of each other and I'm going to pop one up with some foam so we have some dimension. Now I thought my grass was a little too light and it kind of disappeared on my background so I just want to define those edges a little bit more. So I'm going in with some cilantro ink and my blending brush and I'm just inking that top edge and you can see how it starts to stand out. And then I decided I wanted to ink around all the edges. So where my sentiment is, is kind of this lighter glowing green in the middle. And then you get this darker edge that defines the edges of this grass. And I just think that looks so much more striking on this blue background. I'm trimming off the excess for that piece of tree that's gonna go on top so they can layer together properly. And these are gonna go on the top of my card and cover up the top of that tree trunk. So I'm putting my blue paper onto a card base that I've already created. And this watercolor wishes paper works perfectly to make that sky and it looks like you watercolored the background. I do need to back my little open the flap in my tree so I've got a piece of storm cloud cardstock. I've just cut it down so it's going to hide behind this tree and I'm going to put it behind that opening. And then this will give me a little place for my owl to live. So I'll just add a little bit of liquid glue to the back of him and tuck him inside that hole in the tree. And I got his little wings sticking out there. So you kind of, there's a little indication something's hiding in that tree. So this is going to line up right along the left side of the card. And I'm actually figuring out where it needs to be. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. So I'm just going to mark the bottom with a pencil. And then I know exactly where I need to glue this tree down. I'm making sure that that straight edge, that kind of raw edge where I trimmed the frame off on the left side is going to line up right with the edge of my card and look like it just goes off the page. I've put some foam tape on the back of my grass and I'm just going to line that up with the bottom of my card and it's gonna cover up the bottom of the tree. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my little honey pot into Pooh's hands. 
if you use the dies, you know that there's a die that cuts off his little paws, but that honey pot is so small that there wasn't going to be much of a paw to overlap, so I think that this works fine for this situation. I am putting my treetop canopy on. Now for this, I also put some foam tape on the back so it's popped up from that tree a little bit too. So we're gonna kind of make a three-dimensional storybook here. These are kind of coming out from the page a little bit, like a pop-up book. And then I'm putting some thin foam squares on that top tree canopy. So it's actually gonna pop up just a little bit more from that one that it's layered on top of. So I have the little leaves from the Leafy Tree Backdrops portrait. I've cut them from cilantro and noble fir cardstock. And then for my beehive, I'm using this Easter egg die cut. So I cut it from some sunflower cardstock. And then I'm using colored pencils just like I did on my other images to draw in the lines of the beehive and kind of shade them so that it looks like it is shaped like a beehive. And then of course I'm going to go in with my black pencil and create a little oval that's the opening into the beehive. And then that's going to hang in my tree. So here is the little bee. This is from the Be My mini set. And as I said previously, this little guy doesn't actually have a die. So fussy cutting out the images, he's going to match perfectly because I'm going to do the same with him. And I'm going to stamp three little bees. And there are other sets with a bee. I just think this bee is so cute. He is one of my favorites. So if you have another set with bees in it, you could, of course, use that. I used a very pale blue to color the wings, and I actually only colored the bottom of the wings, and then it faded out to white. I colored a dark gray over his black stripes because there's some little hashtag detail in this stamp that I didn't want to lose. And then I just used two yellows to color his body. And then again, I'm going to fussy cut these out just like I did the other images. I'm not going to worry about his little antenna. I'm just going to cut those off. And then I'm going to draw those back in with my black pen once I get them in place on the card. So he's a pretty simple shape to cut out. He's just very small, so you just have to be careful. So I'm going to go ahead and put all my images onto my card. I'm putting some foam tape on his head because that's off the grass, and then I put a little bit of liquid glue on his bum because it's going to sit on the grass. And I'm going to do the same with Piglet. A little bit of foam tape on his head, a little bit of glue on the bottom. And then I'm going to draw in his tail because that was part of the stamp that I actually cut off when I fussy cut him. So just a little added detail of his tail. I've put a foam square on the back of the beehive so it can pop up and look like it's hanging from that upper canopy. And then you can see I've just sprinkled those leaves that I cut from the two different colors of green cardstock around. I just think this adds even more interest to the treetops. I'm just attaching my bees with liquid glue just like the leaves and I'm drawing in my little antenna once I get them glued into place using my thin Copic Multiliner pen. I'm adding the little leaves around with liquid glue as well. And then finally, I am going to put a little bit of honey in this honey pot using some yellow liquid pearls, just a tiny little bit on the rim. And I just like this effect that it looks like honey with that shininess of the liquid pearls. And then I'm also adding a little bit of glitter from the glitter pin, which is very, very subtle, 
to the wings of the bees. And then here is my finished card with that colored pencil coloring for those images. I love this little lift the flap tree that you open up and see the owl. It's a really cool way to stretch that particular die. And I also love the custom sentiment using Harold's ABCs at the bottom. So here's a couple more close-up shots. I just love that shiny honey coming out of the pot. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.